The texture of life isn't in the big things we do, but the little things that we make them mean something. I am dyslexic. I was diagnosed dyslexic when I was in fourth grade. And ever since then, it's been a roller coaster ride. My teachers often told my parents that I was slow, unable to cope up with anything that I would want to achieve. It got a little depressing, and it took a toll on my family. I had no social life because I had no friends. Dyslexia back in the 90s was something that was looked down upon. Not many people knew what it was. Frankly, even I didn't know what it was. Nor did my parents, and nor did my teachers at that point of time. I had a hard time in school. I was always made to stand out of class, not because I was an outstanding student, simply because I did not do my homework. And that's because I did not understand how to do my homework. My parents got worried as to what I was going to do with my life. People around me started to look at me with pitiful eyes. My teachers lost faith. And one day, at an open house, told my parents, sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Karas, but your daughter is dyslexic, which means she would have to go to a special school. And that was the moment that changed my life entirely. I don't know if it was for the good that time. I didn't know if it was for the bad. But I knew that it created such an impact in my head and in my heart that all I wanted to do was scream. That day, I vividly remember, I went back home, and I was numb. I felt like I was diagnosed with a disease, something that I had no idea when it happened, what it happened, and what were the symptoms of it. I hated going to school because everyone looked at me like I was inferior. I wasn't capable of doing something that they could do. I wasn't sitting in the same class as they were sitting in. I was the outsider. And that wasn't a great feeling at all. And then I came across a wonderful quote, the most intriguing quote that happened to me at the age of 10, which stated, the miracle is within you. And I wondered, what does that mean? The miracle is within you. And I thought over it for a couple of days, to which I realized that I had no self-image. I looked at myself in front of a mirror, and I felt sad for myself. So why would anybody else have confidence in me? Why would somebody want to hold my hand and say, you can do it, when I myself can do it in my head? And that's when I understood that anything you want to achieve, anything at all, any ability that you want to cultivate within yourself, all lies within you. That was the miracle. Because you need to be your own hero. And that's exactly what I became. I needed a hero, and that's what I became. And that's when I realized that I needed to love myself. Unconditional love. But first, to love myself, I needed to know myself, right? And I didn't know who I was. Because I was always told I'm dyslexic. I was always told I was slow. I was also interpreted, uh, interpreted as uh, mentally challenged by some, because they had no idea what dyslexia was and what mentally challenged individuals are. So I kind of believed myself for a couple of uh, years that I was all of these. And then, and then I realized that I needed to love myself. And the self-love started with the quote of the miracle. So I took down a pen and paper and made a list of all the things I wanted to do, achieve, be, and be known for. And that's exactly what I did. I became a fighter. I became a fighter for everything I wanted to achieve. A couple of years later, I stumbled upon image consulting. And that's where I understood that that was the perfect medium for me to execute my game plan. What was my game plan? My game plan was to change the image of all individuals 
who have learning disabilities, who are mentally challenged, who need special help. I wanted to change that entire image. You know, when we meet somebody um, at a party, and if they have a child, or a sibling, or a family member who is Down syndrome, autistic, or any of it, or even dyslexic, how do you react? Oh, so sad. Oh, it must be hard. Yes, it's hard. But by you making that facial expression, it just got harder. Yeah? That's the image I wanted to change. I wanted people to be proud about it. I wanted parents to proudly say, my child is Down syndrome and I'm okay with it. I will deal with it. And it's nothing bad. It's okay to have a dyslexic child. It is okay to be dyslexic. That does not mean you cannot achieve anything you want, right? So that's the image I wanted to change. So I collaborated all the things that I learned from image consulting, which was, of course, self-image. How do you improve your self-image? I took those components and I mixed it up with my disabilities. So from all my disabilities, I learned some things. And it was about acknowledging yourself. The minute I acknowledged myself, the world started to endorse me. So the minute I said, I can do it, everybody around me started saying, maybe she could do it. You never know. It was a first step. I started to give myself a chance because nobody gave me a chance. Nobody gave me a chance. Nobody held my hand and said, you could do it. It was to such an extent that sometimes I even kind of figured that my parents were kind of, you know, jittery, that maybe can she do it or not? They were the only ones supporting me. But at that point of time, I can understand parental pressure. When a parent has been constantly told your child is not going to do something with her life. So I started acknowledging myself. I started acknowledging my qualities, my abilities, all of that. And that's when people around me started to endorse me and say that, yes, yeah, she could do it. Maybe she can, give her a chance, let's try. So that was my learning as well from life. So I started with my image consulting with an NGO known as Advitya. Here are a few pictures of the NGO. It's an NGO for the mentally challenged adults. Here at Advitya, we empower these young adults who are differently abled to do something with their lives. It's a vocational center where they work and they spend good quality of their day with the rest of the kids who are just like them. And they feel equal. Nobody in this center is made to feel one up or one down. And that's when I realized that this is exactly how I wanted my journey to start off. I wanted everyone to understand that by being different, you can still make a difference. That was the message that I wanted to give out. Now, if I had this thought, and I simply just sat on it by saying, I feel for it, I understand the pain, all of that, and did nothing about it, I would just be interested in the thought. I wouldn't be involved. And the second thing that was more important as a learning to me was being interested is one thing and being involved is another. You need to be interested and involved. I'll give you a quick example of it. After a workshop, a parent came up to me and she said that, you know, I understand uh, what you do and I would really like to volunteer my time to you someday. Because my child is dyslexic, and I understand how it is, you know, with the kids and the parents, all of it. So I said, okay, um, do come, uh, do share your number with me, and we shall connect later. And I did call her after two weeks, because I needed her time then. And she said to me, I'm so sorry, but I cannot come today. It's simply because I have social commitments, and I cannot cancel them, because that would be embarrassing. And I gently put the phone down and I laughed in my head. She had the idea. She had the interest of doing something. But she wasn't involved with it. 
very important if you feel for something, you need to be involved with it. We merely have interests, baseless, aimless interests. I want to do this and I want to do that. How is it that only some of us get out there to actually doing it? I could have done the same. I was called lazy for at least 60% of my present life. And I could have just done that, being lazy. Okay, yes, I'm dyslexic, I felt the pain, I understood all of that. But I wanted to be there and make a difference. I wanted to be the example out there and tell people that being dyslexic doesn't mean you're disabled completely. And at the same time, if you even are mentally challenged, doesn't mean you cannot do certain other things. And that was the time I, I put it all up together and I said to myself that, you know what, we're never going to be perfect. Life is never going to be perfect, we're never going to be perfect, but if we have the ability and the will within us to ignite that spark, we can go where we want to go. We can achieve all that we want to achieve. Today I stand here being dyslexic, telling you, you can be here tomorrow. So let's learn to inspire before we expire. Thank you very much.